welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, and today we're talking about Montanism. A long time ago, in what is now called Turkey, there was a province called Phrygia, a former kingdom in Asia Minor, and in that province there was a man named Montanus. Because this was so long ago, not much is known about his actual life or birth, but we do know that he was a talented preacher, and that he was probably preaching sometime between 135 and 177 AD. Montanus lived in the town of Pepuza and preached to Christians, but it didn't take him long to start making strange predictions. He claimed to be a prophet of God, and that the paraclete, which Jesus had promised to send to his people, who, it turned out, was the Holy Spirit, spoke through him. He said that the towns of Pepuza and Timion, both in Phrygia, were where the new Jerusalem would be, and declared Pepuza to be his headquarters. He also surrounded himself with two women named Prissa or Priscilla, and Maximilla, who became even more popular than Montanus himself, and together they preached penance and fervor, emphasizing that miraculous gifts were continuing, like prophecy and speaking in tongues. However, Montanus also began claiming that his teachings were above those of the church, and he and his followers, having founded a movement referred to as the New Prophecy, started to claim that Jesus would return very, very soon in Pepiza, his own hometown. In time, of course, this prophecy turned out to be false, Montanism lost its steam, and of course, more orthodox Christian preachers continued to oppose him on a lot of these things, so it was only a matter of time before Montanism came to an end in the last parts of the 2nd century AD. I think Montanism is interesting, because of all the various heresies that have been brought back in recent years, this is the only major one that really doesn't have, so to speak, a prayer. After all, Montanus has been dead for centuries, and his prophecies turned out to be untrue. Without those things, his movement really didn't, and doesn't, have anywhere to go. In modern-day terms, Montanus should probably be seen in the same light as a charismatic televangelist, but without television. He's the man who talked about miracles and prophecies, spoke in tongues, called people up from the audience, and made big promises to a world looking for some end to the persecutions of the early church. And ultimately, it turned out to be just a scam. Now, it's possible Montanus actually believed that he was a prophet. However, it was still a scam, whether he was the mastermind behind it or not. While we don't need to watch out for Montanus anymore, and I seriously doubt any of us will ever become believers in Montanism, it's important to keep in mind how easily his kind of scams can prey on the innocent and the desperate, and to keep our eyes out for other scam artists in our own age. Believe me, there's plenty of them. Next, we'll move forward in time just a few decades and meet a priest by the name of Sibelius. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.